Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have all of the information for the 24.2 patch notes. So I'm gonna do a bit of a rundown for it. And it's hard to be excited for this one. It's hard not to be sarcastic as well because I'm sure you guys haven't been living under a rock. Over the last 48 hours, we've gotten the trickle in of news, Blizzard strategically releasing the bad stuff early, all in one clump and saying, hey, we're going to change monetization in the game. Hey, we're adding digital currency, all these other things. And then putting the patch notes, you know, at the end, so that we can talk about that one eventually. So let's address that elephant in the room to start. I know you guys, many people have left comments like, hey, Bofer, why don't you release a video saying how you like or dislike or whatever you, you know, what's your opinion on the monetization changes? And it's just really hard not to be incredibly pessimistic because I think it's a massive mistake. And I think tons and tons and tons of people that have been in my Twitch channel this week you guys know how I feel about this. I'm downright depressed about this. You are actively choosing to kill the casual player base. This is a, as a streamer, as a, a person who invests tons and tons and tons of time into Battlegrounds, this change to me personally would be like, oh, okay, it's a slight investment for a game that I'm going to play and use as a product, right? Like from a personal standpoint, it's not the end of the world. But for all of those people, all those players that play five games a week, that play 10 games a week, that, that are students that have very limited budgets that can't, can't be, or, or choosing between, do you live your basic life? Live whatever, I don't even say basic, like just, it's $15 every four months. Let's not try to, to disguise this. And we, what are you getting for it? You're getting cosmetics, or that's what you should be getting for it. You should be getting cosmetics for that with the battle pass, and that would have been okay. And you would have been like, okay, $14 or $15, or whatever it is in your region. For the battle pass, I get all these cool cosmetics. Cool. I support the game that I play. And obviously, Blizzard has said, and this is their, their response, that they can't fund the game off of cosmetics. And you're taking the word for the com from the company saying, okay, well, if that's the case, then you have to change something. And you got to make money in a different way to keep investing in development time or whatever. All bad faith, good faith arguments aside for a second here. It makes sense that you need to fund the game, right? You got to fund a video game. Now, that being said, this is not the way. You don't put a paywall in front of the free-to-play experience. And when you get into these kind of situations, all of the discussions amongst the community boil down to the same thing, which is paywalls are bad. Pay to win is bad. And this is going to be, you know, the differentiating feature. I've seen a bunch of this infighting amongst people on the forums, on the comments, etc., etc. Whether you call this pay to win or pay to play, whatever the threshold is, is irrelevant. It is a paywall that affects your win rate in the game. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what your definition is at that point. It is a net negative impact on absolutely everybody playing this game. Net negative impact. You basically took away a toy that everybody had for now, what, two over two years? And then put it behind a $15 paywall and say, okay, well, this is the new season. What did you expect to be a response? You know Blizzard absolutely expected the response to be outrage because there's absolutely no way you have an expectation that taking away a toy from people and giving it back results in anything but a negative sentiment. Now that all being said, it is a change. It is, it is one change. One thing has happened so far. No, ignoring the other rune stones and all that kind of stuff. And we can voice our, our negative opinions of it, right? Attacking every other person that has a slightly different opinion than you. We could probably avoid that, right? Right, as a community? We can all just together say this isn't good. This is bad. I know a lot of people are putting the cart before the horse and being like, well, if you do this, then you might make it so that on turn one, you can purchase five armor for a dollar. We aren't there yet. This isn't, you know, a, a full-on gotcha game. We don't want to go down that road. That's why we have these discussions. But that could be the future, right? That could be the future with those kind of games. And when you go down that road, it's a slippery slope. And that's why you say these things. All right. That's the elephant in the room. It absolutely, absolutely sucks. But now you get into the other parts. Like the rune stones, the digital currency in the game. The response from the developers in terms of why do we have rune stones has been pretty pretty clear they basically said we want to be able to enable purchases of small increments without massive transaction fees for those of you that have spent time around digital currency 
a lot of times this is the reason why people put the digital currency in the game saying oh if you want to sell something for 99 cents you eat about a 30 to 40 percent of that transaction fee or eat the 30 to 40 percent of your value in transaction fees processing that sale well, if you make it so that you buy $50 with a digital currency, then you can sell 50 items with a digital currency and only eat that one time, like 30 cent transaction charge. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's move past that point and remember why we hate digital currency in these kind of communities. Selling things in increments that cause you to buy more digital currency than the actual value and cost of the items. The disconnect from the actual cost of an item with respect to dollars or whatever your, your real life currency is compared to spending rune stones and then having that emotional disconnect from the money so that you're more willing to spend money. There's a psychological manipulation aspect to digital currencies, which should not be, absolutely should not be ignored. And all of the other sides of things, it's just a technical difficulty to get in the way of bur just purchasing things. It is an inconvenience. Does it suck? Yes. Is this one on the surface a critical problem to me? I don't think so. I think if they implement this in the right way, it's not that big of a problem. Would I prefer the system without it? Absolutely. But I get the reasoning why they want to put it in the game. And there are a couple little promising aspects here. This is a Ben Harstone's Twitter account showing what is purchasable with uh, runestones versus what was purchasable with real life money. So a lot of things... You can just still spend, you know, dollar dollar bills, yo, and just buy them directly with dollars. Then the things I purchased with gold, you'll obviously notice that the gold things are disappearing. Battlegrounds, season pass, but cosmetics are just runestones, which gets annoying. But one of the more promising things that we did see is that the runestone bundle, bundles that they're selling, they are selling in small increments, like down at $5 for 500 Which means that even if you are buying things in weird increments... You're only overpaying by somewhere between, you know, $0 and $5 max over the lifetime of you buying things in Battlegrounds or, or Hearthstone in general, whatever it might be. It could be a lot worse. If they were selling them in bundles of 5,000 as the lowest range, there's a big difference between 500. Now, that was the only positive I could find out of this system. I absolutely hate these kind of systems, and I'm very, very negative on them. But that was the one big positive I could find, is that this increment is really small. And that does stand by the words that they're saying, that they're really trying to implement this kind of stuff for reducing transaction fees, rather than trying to milk every last cent out of people. But remember, this is, this is Blizzard. This isn't a person being altruistic here. This is a company, at the end of the day, and companies are built to make money. And if this makes them more money, then they're going to do this. The incentive, I've seen so many comments online like, why don't they just make the bundle not include the tavern pass? Just make it all cosmetics. That would make everybody happy. It's not about making people happy. It's a company out there trying to make money. They are out there doing what they have determined is the best way for them to make the most money for the company. It's a company at the end of the day. We got to keep that in mind. Yeah, we can yell at it and scream at it all we want. Keep in mind that, you know, when we're yelling and screaming at developers online, that the developers aren't the ones making these decisions. I imagine the vast majority of the PR people that we're interacting with are more frustrated than we are. So, like, you know, there's a person behind that screen. But damn, those money people at Blizzard, the ones making these decisions, I am very upset with you. All right, all right, all right. So the elephant's out of the room. First 10 minutes of this thing is basically ranting about the new runestones, the new... The new pay-to-win system, my god. The, the one the thing that I keep saying, and I think is the most important part about the, the new Battle Pass, is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much of an advantage you have with four heroes versus two. The math's been done on this. It's about 0.1 placement per game. You know, if you're anywhere in the range, like, top 50%, the top 1%. It, it gets a little more extreme at the absolute heights of players. But that doesn't matter. Point one placement, three rating a game. In saturation, that means a person that has perks will place about 400 points over a person that doesn't have perks. It, does, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why? Because it's not fun, man. It's not fun. Because the game is a game that we've played for two years with four hero choices. 
you're telling me that, oh, you can get your, your normal rating, minus like 400, but you're going to have to play Rat King and Maleficent and whatever other tempo heroes because they are reasonably good but boring, patchwork, whatever it might be, instead of having those games where you would have played it with Gallywix or would have played it with Togwoggle or Jandis or one of them like you enjoy more. At the end of the day, it's a video game. And if you've taken somebody's candy away from them after two years of having the candy and then charged them back money for it and said, hey, you can have the candy, but it's going to cost you 15 bucks. You're, this is this is the response. This is the response you get. The entire community giving the same response. This is not okay. All right, well, I said the elephant was out of the room. The elephant's not leaving. It's still here. But at least we can talk about the patch. Moving forward. Twitter away. So the new patch includes a lot of... Uh, my God, this is so hard to say now. I'm outraged so much all of this time. It's really not outrage. It's just disappointment. Some people have been, we've been talking about this now for two days. When it comes to like the Hearthstone creator program, certain content creators have been a little bit more, myself included, have been a little bit more reserved on the response because we kind of knew this was coming. That, uh, for those of you that don't know, there is a Hearthstone creator program out there. You can Google Hearthstone creator program and apply for it if you are a content creator. And certain things like this sometimes get bounced off of the content creators as, hey, we're going to be implementing this in the future. What is your feedback on it? And I wrote a huge, huge set of feedback, talked to multiple developers and said, fuck no, this is a terrible, terrible move. And of course, you know, the developer said, we'll pass it along, you know, that kind of stuff. Obviously, it still went live, whatever it might be. And then you've seen responses from other content creators that are a little bit less outraged you know, than the, the typical response that we're seeing out there right now. It's really just the difference between having two weeks to process something or a week or whatever it might be versus having a day to process it. Like, believe me, when, that, when I heard this news the first time, I got in a call with like eight other content creators that like my size are bigger, like big Hearthstone content creators, and everybody was just audibly distraught. Like, this is the worst thing that has happened to Battlegrounds. Absolutely hate this shit. A week later, you're a little bit more dead. It's, you've come to terms with the problem. And now you're listening to other people going through that set of grief. We've moved from phase one to like phase four, you know? We're just moving past it a little bit quicker because you just have more time to process it. It sucks. All of us know it sucks. But we got to move on. Yeah, that's the third time I've said the elephant's out of the room. The elephant's not leaving the room. We're going to walk around it and we're going to look at the other promising things that the elephant's blocking. All right, when it comes to the good part of the patch, there is a good part of the patch. There is a new system coming with the Tavern Quests system. The Battlegrounds track system is giving a lot of cosmetics, including the first time legendary rewards with new skins and, and stuff that is, let's just say, there's more investment into it, which is cool for the future. The systems being adjusted and all that kind of stuff yeah, I don't love it. You know, the two hero slots, etc., etc. Being in Tavern Pass, we've, we've beaten that horse to death, etc., etc., etc. But the new bundles and whatnot that are coming look kind of interesting. Now, I am going to bring up today... This, um... Shoot. There you go. The new Battlegrounds Pass. Or the new Battlegrounds Patch Notes. So we can actually talk about the actual gameplay changes. We're going to have a quest system added to the game, which allows you to effectively choose what you choose a pair. I don't know why this interface is showing like this. You choose a pair of prizes, effectively rewards and quests. So like the quests themselves that you choose, and then you choose your rewards. So basically a set of quests, from a pool of 13 quests are going to be offered to you as a discover three option on turn four. Choose amongst them as which one you can achieve. And then from that point, you're going to choose, you're going to get uh, a quest reward. We've seen the interfaces displayed. That one, that's such a weird image to use. Whereas like this quest with this reward tied to it, those quests and reward pairs will be changing game to game. So like, on, in one game, you might have summoned 13 minions. These numbers are also tunable. With another hidden body as the reward. In another game, you might be offered this thing with, uh, I don't know, 
devil in the details as your reward, etc, etc, etc. So basically, they are tunable objectives that you're going to be offered to your hero. So weird, I'm not sure why they're showing it like that. From a big pool of different quests, and a huge pool of different rewards, which will augment the way you play the middle of the game. If it's super interesting, you, you need to dive further into this. I will uh, put the link to the patch notes in the description below. I'm not going to spend 25 minutes walking through. Oh my god, mirror shield looks so cool. Smoking gun looks really boring, etc, etc, etc. There's a lot of stuff there. We did like a two and a half hour discussion on it yesterday on stream. The first like three-ish hours actually of the stream yesterday. If you guys are curious about that, the Twitch stream, first three hours of yesterday's VODs is literally just walking through all of them and discussing. So you can search down or search for that information if you are curious about it, what my opinions are on things, but uh, not here. We're not going to do that here. All right, general updates coming in the patch. Turn four, the six gold turn, you'll have a slightly extended time period for the new quest mechanic. That way you have a little more time to choose your rewards. Hopefully it's not, you know, 30, 40 more seconds, but early on, you're going to want to spend a little bit of time reading the quests after a week or whatever. They can definitely tune down the amount of extra time. Remember on the original prize meta, where turn 4, 8, 12, and 16 were supposed to be too long of turns. Let's ignore the fact that uh, they accidentally put it on the wrong number and turn 3, 7, 11, and 15 were the ones that got extra time. But yeah, they, this isn't a, an unprecedented change. It's something they've had before. Players may now exceed 10 gold when selling minions, otherwise gaining gold during the shop phase. This is kind of kind of nice. It's a quality of life adjustment. There is at least, what, one point in the game where uh, this could affect double leveling with leveling to Tavern 6. So like for Gallywix, maybe if you had that much gold or Barov, very unlikely that that is the major, major change. It's mostly those situations where you start the turn, you have a minion frozen or a triple or whatever hand space problems, or spellcraft spells, or whatever, and you need to sell something or buy something immediately, and you either burn gold or burn value. Sometimes you just have to burn gold if you have something frozen in the shop. So being able to go up to 11 initially is a nice quality of life change. It also makes turns a little bit easier for like APM pirates and whatnot, because you don't have to worry about exceeding gold cap. So like APM pirates gets better as well with this, because your flexibility with gold is actually a limiting factor in a lot of boards especially with boards like Gamblers and, and whatnot. Now, oftentimes it is just a... Should have rolled an extra time before selling a minion. When you take away that consideration, you can play a little bit faster and you get a little bit better value out, on average out of the comp. There, are, It's just a nice quality of life adjustment. There are a couple little places where it is actually a net increase in the amount of value you can get off of a hero or situation, but most of the time it just makes choices simpler, which is nice. Unnecessary complications with 10 gold cap. Battlegrounds exclusive weekly quests have been removed. Yeah, they're basically exp or moving the experience track and the, the rewards and whatnot away from each other with a new tavern pass. New legendary quests for some Battlegrounds cosmetics. Cool, we like those things. Two new heroes. Number one, Murloc Holmes, Armor Tier 2. Detective for hire for zero gold. Look at two minions. Guess which one's on your opponent's board for a coin. Basically, bear off light. Lord Barov, to guess who wins a combat. This is guess who, what minions on a board is going to be guaranteed on certain turns turn one you can't you can't use your or you use your hero power the turn two I should use to turn two as my example you look at your opponent your opponent is showing one murloc you push the button it gives you a rock pool hunter and a, and a elemental as the options hmm i wonder which one's on their board considering that you can still scout people with what tribes they have it's going to create a lot of situations where if you're really min-maxing the game, you try to memorize what people have on the first couple turns to increase the likelihood that if like, if you're shown a rock pool hunter on turn five for a hero, if they started the game with one Murloc, it's a lot more likely they have that than if, say, for example, they started the game with one elemental. Is that a little bit of min-maxing that is fairly unnecessary and a lot of work? Yeah, probably. It's probably not going to be done by a lot of people. But it is something to think about. A little bit extra value. Alright. Sire Denathrius. Tar Armor Tier 1. Passive. Start of the game. Choose one of two quests. In addition to the quests that all players automatically get. You can have two quests at once. Good clarification from the devs. Because that was immediately the question I had as soon as I read this. Do you still get a quest at the later point in the game? 
Now it doesn't say what reward you get or what choices you have for the reward, so we're going to assume two as well. Given there's a play test today, all of your answers are... By the time this video goes live, all of those answers are already answered, or all those questions are already answered. And we'll have this patch out on Tuesday, so... Pretty exciting to see how this one works out. Once again, it is so hard to gauge the value of quests. I guess I haven't said that yet. It is incredibly hard to gauge how good quests are because we don't know the speed of the game. We don't know how tunable those quest objectives are going to be. Is summon 16 minions tied with this reward or this reward or this reward? Is this 16 minions a range of 8 to 20 minions? Is it a range of 15 to 17 minions? What is like all of those numbers and all that tuning are going to determine how useful these things are. At a glance, it's an interesting mechanic. The balance side of things is a giant nebulous blob because we don't really know what the specifics are going to be in what situations paired with what rewards on what heroes at what point in the game, what the speed of the meta, blah, 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 blah. We don't really know. This hero could be tier one. This hero could be tier four. It just comes down to how achievable and how impactful the combination of quests and rewards actually are. All right. Heroes are getting updated. Praise be. Praise be to the light. Rakanishu has finally gotten some love. It's the day, chat. It's the day. Rakanishu gets his day in the sun. Old Rakanishu hero power, two gold, give a friendly minion, friendly minion stats equal to their tavern tier, has been changed to a one gold hero power. Praise, praise. Yes, 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 yes. Turns out that one gold hero powers are much more playable than two gold hero powers, believe it or not. Give a minion stats equal to its tavern tier. So we just turned this hero into Toki Curve. Level on two, level on four. Basically level on the five, four gold turn, then on five gold turn you have roll by a two star hero power it. And then you get to level hero power that two star again, and then buy a three star, a minion from the shop, and then hero power the three star. Basically, those kind of lines are reasonably powerful. The ability to target a minion, to take an extra 7-7 seven, seven in the middle of the game and level aggressively is a good start to a game. And if a good start to a game and going to three aggressively is good in the meta, then Rakanishu may have a place. Do I think Rakanishu is by any means broken? No. Do I think that he is better than Guff? Probably not but more flexible than Guff with a better aggressive leveling curve means that he's not the same hero, just worse like he was before. Interesting, not tier one, but much, much, much more playable in this current form. Rakanishu is back on the menu, boys. Hooray. Patchwork. Oh my God, they fundamentally changed Patchwork, guys. Huge changes. He now has 60 health instead of 55 health. All right, moving on. Patchwork is still boring. <laughs> He'll just be better again. And Patchwork is already a playable hero in certain lobbies. It's just once again the same problem. Same as the, the Tavern Pass problem. When heroes are boring, people don't want to play them. And if you only can choose from two heroes, and one of them is Patchwork, you're going to be sad. <laughs> you know? This is not fun. Uh, at least I don't find it fun. Maybe some people like Patchwork. Vandar, fundamentally changing the hero power. Avenge 2, give your minions plus one health permanently. Gone are the kooky shenanigans plays. In fact, later in the patch, we're going to see kooky chemist has been removed from the game as well to add that as well to the list of changes. But Vandar gets passive health scaling. Likewise, Avenge 3 on Drek'thar, passive attack scaling. This is good. Drek'thar's is good, man. Like a couple death rattle minions and a couple divine shields. And suddenly you have a mid game board state with like seven to 10 health divine shield units or 10 attack divine shield units. You can play toward resets and death rattles with mechs and deflecto bots. And like, this is a really achievable mid game hero. And when you can make, you know, 30, 40 attack over the course of a game on deflecto bots, that's not a trivial late game board either. It'll be interesting to see. Deflectos tend to live till the very end of fights too. So you get a lot of avenge procs. We will see, we will see. Vandar's, on the other hand, looks like a lot of tempo early. I'm I'm curious how their internal testing moved this to tier armor tier one and this to armor tier two. I would lean toward Drek'thar as a better hero than Vandar here, but maybe I'm underestimating how important winning early combats is in the quest meta. 
It is very hard to gauge balance of heroes when you have an overarching system that is fundamentally changing the way the game is played. We will see. But both of these heroes are way more interesting in this passive form, in my opinion. Good changes. Arana gets a very slight buff. Now your tavern will always have seven minions in it. So basically, okay, after your your, your hero power is complete. Your, hero power, your tavern will always have seven minions. If you buy a minion from a seven minion shop, it'll just replenish that minion immediately. So like you buy two or three minions average a turn, you get to see two or three extra minions. It's a slight buff. It's nice. It's a tweak on a hero that's weak. I can work with that. Yeah, that's fine. Good changes. Is it a, a fund fundamentally making Arana great? No, it's not fundamentally changing the hero power. It's not going to massively tweak her, her average. Just good change. Floor goal. After you sell four minions, get a random Murloc, move it to armor tier two. Okay. So old floor goal was obviously terrible after they changed it. Okay. Not old, old floor goal, but like the one we had yesterday. Floor goal was obviously terrible. Now we have one that actually gives you some level of gold. You're going to have to play quite a bit into the game before you get uh, a really good impact of this. You don't sell four minions outside of like obscure token gambler starts until like you're on tavern four. So you basically play the early portion of the game without any real hero power, but then if you get to a state where you can cycle Murlocs, you'll get some extra free Murlocs, and that's good. Okay, we'll see how that one plays out. I don't believe this is that strong, but we'll see. We shall see. Crag, Bank Canal Store, over 10 gold. Kind of changes... I think they changed this because they changed the way gold works. Just to so that uh, Piggy Bank can feel like it's a little bit better. How often do you wait to push the button until you have at least over 10 gold? Very rarely. Very, 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 very rarely. Now, if you had your old buddy back, that'd be a different story. But uh, yeah, now that we have the ability to exceed 10 gold, makes sense that this, this hero power can go past 10 gold too. Just a change to keep things consistent and help out in some obscure situation here. Gale Wing. Seems weird to have Gale Wing getting a buff. But that being said, Gale Wing was a one hero power Andy. You pushed the Iron Forge option the three turn option over and over and over and over again. Now they just made the other two options a little bit better. Does this really change going? We shall see. But that being said, it is nice to have choices on the hero instead of it just being, oh, that one's Ironforge. I will click that. Old Westfall to attack is now changed to two plus two plus one. And old Plague Lands, the discount the tavern tier cost by five is now upgrade or discount to it by six. So basically one extra gold on the Plague Land option, and one extra health each time on the, the first option. This does open up a kind of a unique possibility here, or a, a more niche possibility, possibility I should say, that uh, delaying your Iron Forge for, for a turn and playing like Jeef Curve may be a little bit better on Gale Wing. Like turn one, Westfall, and then turn two and turn five using um, Iron Forge. So in other words, you can stay down for two turns, then level three, four, five, then take a three star, then level to four, play on four, then level to five, and then take a five star. Like that kind of curve will be decent for Gale Wing. We shall see how this one plays out, but the extra one health is nice in the mid game. It buys you a little bit of time. One health on the right kind of minion is a big deal, especially things like, uh, like Micro Mummy. In the beginning of the game, something being a 3-2 versus a 3-3 is a very big difference in the mid game. Those trade really well. Or by or even more so with like uh, Chrome Wing or something. Where instead of having a 3-4, you can have a 3-5. And 3-5s trade incredibly well. Alright. They did change a few minions. Let me scroll real quick to get the minions that are removed. I feel like this should always be the first thing in the minion changes. Because when you look at new minions, you're like, what about this synergizing with that? Some of them are gone. Biggest change. Toxfin is back. Sefin is gone. This is an absolutely ridiculously large game-changing change. Ignore the demons for a second. Ignore the demons behind the curtain. Toxfin versus Sefin radically changes the gold investment into poison equation. In the mid-game, in, in tempo lobbies, Sefin isn't a very good card. Toxfin is an absolutely terrible card. If you have those games that have like Mech Beast, whatnot, nobody's picking up Sefin as it is. Okay, that's not true. 
Very few people will be picking up Stefan in those games. Toxfin, dead. In the games where you have none of that tempo, this is where it gets really important, you end up in the opposite scenario. Stefan becomes like the best card in the lobby to pick up in those Quillbor plus Elemental plus whatever lobbies where everybody just goes big stats. And now you can't just pick up Stefan and go, yep, I'm going to go full poisons. Now you're going to need to get into a state where you're offered like, okay, I get a Toxfin, I can make one poison. That doesn't give me direction. Yeah, if you get Bran and you get Cycling and you don't have Sefin early, Toxfin's a better hit than Sefin would have been. Yes. But think about what you're saying there. You're saying, if you get this specific five star, you live a long time and pair it with a bunch of synergy cards, then it's good. Yeah, that should be the case. Turns out that living for a long time in the game with synergy should be somewhat competitive for getting first place. That is a good thing. What we don't like seeing, or at least what I don't like seeing, is that in certain scenarios, a triple into a five star into seven is your game definition, and everything after that point is pivoting around it. You're just like, yep, I'm going to get seven. I'm going to throw a couple Murlocs on the board. I don't need health on them. I'm going to just hard roll for selfless hero, slash ghoul, slash baron, whatever it is as the tech piece. Or I'm leveling straight to six after that point, and I'm just looking for Manted. There is a lot more gold investment into making Toxfin Murloc boards than there is into making Sefin Murloc boards. That is the big takeaway. All right. Kooky Chemist is gone. Steward of Time. Bublet. Bublet. Silverback Patriarch. Monkey, no! We hardly knew you. They basically took all of the cards that they temporarily added here and said, yep, those were a little event. They're gone now. And then a couple of the, uh, the um, what are these? A couple of the demons. Ooh, Briny Bootlegger's gone. I didn't see that one. That's a big deal. Gold Pirate. The three star. Rip. That's a huge card. This is an incredibly important card. Shifter Zeris, Cobalt Scalebane. Cobalt? You've been in the game for so long and everyone's ignored you for this long. I wonder if anyone will notice if you're gone. Witchwing. Ooh, Witchwing's gone. Mithrax. Big changes here. Witchwing being gone off of Tavern 4, along with Briny Bootlegger from Tavern 3, does decrease the average value of a 3-star shop. Even Soul Devourer was a good 3-star. Shifter Zeris was a good 3-star for 3-on-3. Three three. Like, 3-on-3 three three got a lot weaker here. Going the 4 aggressively, 3-on-3 three three for Witchwing. Obviously, Cobalt is highly situational. Mithrax hurts the Menagerie line. Then again, Sefin being gone improves the Menagerie line. So, like... We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Trickster has been moved from Tavern 1 to Tavern 2. Is now a 2-3 instead of a 2-2. Imprisoner has been moved from Tavern 2 to Tavern 1, so basically swapped stat, swap places and adjusted its stats accordingly. Instead of a 3-3, it's a 2-2. Draconoid Enforcer somehow has yet again dodged the axe for units being removed from the game. That is the dragon that gains a 2-2 every time a Divine Shield is popped has gone from Tavern 3 back to Tavern 4, where it was originally, and is now a 3-7. It was a 3-6 originally, right? It just keeps moving around, and it's unimpactful no matter where it is. <laughs> it has a place on George boards. It's occasionally useful. I'm not sure why this is still here, but it's here. And we have a couple new minions, so let's do the minions, and then we'll be done with the patch review. Picky Eater, Tavern Tier 1 Demon. One attack, one health. Battle Cry, consume a random minion in Bob's Tavern to gain its stats. So basically, you just play the minion to the shop, eat a random minion in the... Um, play the minion to the board, eat a random minion in the shop. Man, Bublet would have been nice to be in the game, right? No more Bublet. No more 5-4 that you can consume randomly. Mind Muck. Tavern 2 Demon. 3 attack, 2 health. Battle Cry chooses a demon and consumes a minion in Bob's Tavern and gains its stats. Choose a friendly demon, consumes a minion in Bob's Tavern and to gain its stats. So basically, you target a demon on your board and that thing does the Azul effect. Eats a minion in the shop, gains its stats okay a targetable buff it's basically like think of uh what's the um whatever the elemental card is the three three that buffs a battle cry buff a minion equally to tavern tier it's about how many stats you get at a specific tavern tier and this thing's a two star so putting a demon on the board early in the game will be nice because you can take advantage of this guy which is a lot of stats in the mid game piggyback imp Tier 2 Demon, 4-1 health, Death Rattle, summon a 4-1 Imp. 
it's uh imp rager that's what it is for those people that have played played uh standard interesting <laughs> imp rager has one health does a lot of damage death rouse and summons another this is um yeah i don't this is really overtuned it's a death rattle minion it synergizes well with a lot of things you can do in the mid game it is two instances of four damage on tavern two whoa that's not okay that's not okay for tempo but then again we would want to incentivize playing tavern two because tavern two is weak and this is a good reason to play tavern two think about what like the highest tempo two stars are excluding board buffs like your rel and spawn standalone minions that are capable of doing upwards of five damage like uh boar like uh like uh what's the rat sewer rat those kind of minions are like the best tempo minions on tavern two this thing is better than those minions that's crazy nether drake tier two dragon zero attack okay well zero attack good thing they removed kooky at the end of your turn zero attack five health i hiccuped <laughs> Zero attack, five health. At the end of your turn, give your dragons plus one attack. Attack scaling for dragons on tavern two. Huh. I mean, it. it's okay. It's a one five initially, which isn't bad for tavern two. A two five is very good. You give passive attack scaling with whelp smuggler. That's pretty nasty because instead of it being one attack, it's one one. When you have a chroma wing on the board, it enables chroma wing to gain extra attack when it levels. We don't have the old 3-3 three, three anymore, so like it's not like we diluted the pool. I like it. It's interesting. It's different. We'll see how balanced it is. I think it's okay. It's very reasonable to pick up on like turn 3. You're not going to pick it up on like turn 5. So it's a card that you like for one, maybe two turns. It's different. I like the design. I'm not sure about how it's implemented. Amber Guardian, 3-star tavern, or tavern tier 3 dragon. 3 attack, 2 health to start a combat, give another friendly dragon, plus 3-3 three, three, and divine shield. Oh, oh, I see. So obviously start of combat means non-permanent. Can't just constantly be given divine shields out. Doesn't make your board George. But another friendly dragon, if it's a chroma wing or it's like a nether drake, it's going to be a high health minion getting 3 attack, plus the extra 3 health and divine shield. Pretty good for the mid game. That's a lot of tempo if you have another dragon on the board. A 3-2 that gives a 3-3 buff and a Divine Shield. This thing is better than most 3 stars in tempo. Even if you have just like a 1-5 on the board. That's really good. Very good, very good tempo. It looks like a lot of minions are being shifted a little more tempo oriented right now. Now the big demon. Legion Overseer. Tavern Tier 3 demon. 4 attack, 4, he uh, four health. Minions in Bob's Tavern have plus 2-2. Two, two. For those of you that heard me review this card live, you know I don't like inconsistencies. This minion looks like it works like Nomi, which is interesting. Minions in Bob's Tavern gain plus 2-2. Two, two. But we also heard that by selling this minion, you lose that effect, right? Now, a lot of people are going to be like, Bofor, you're being so pedantic. Don't spend time critiquing the, the mechanics. Just learn exactly what they do. They don't have to be 100% consistent. But this is kind of a problem we've had in Battlegrounds in the past. When you implement multiple minions that have the same kind of effect and they don't behave in the same way, that's a problem. Kooky Chemist as a card highlighted some of those issues. Like, for example, when you use Kooky Chemist on an elemental that was in the shop, it would not reapply the aura till the beginning of the next buy phase. Now, what happens with Legion Overseer? You're going to play this minion to the board, your shop's going to get too, too bigger. The, the, the idea of what you do with this card is that, you know, then consume minions from the shop and you get extra stats, or you buy the minion from the shop with the extra 2-2 two, two and it gets better, right? It's a good tempo card. What happens when you sell the Overseer off the board? I'm assuming the shop goes back down 2-2, two, two, right? All future shop minions aren't 2-2 two, two buffed. How is this the same thing as Nomi as everyone was defending it as, where Nomi was gain a 1-1 one, one to minions in the shop each time you play an elemental? One of those is permanent, and one of them is temporary. There's no way every time you play a Legion Overseer that the shop stays 2-2 two, two buff forever. Otherwise, this card is completely busted. I talked circles around this for a while yesterday, trying to give counterexamples. A lot of people were uh, defending it. I just don't like incons inconsistencies in game mechanics. 
it makes it so that you have to memorize that, you know, this thing doesn't work the same way Nomi buffs would work. You just have to know that buying minions from the shop that are buffed outside of Spellcraft snapshot the stats, and that Legion Overseer is a temporary aura to the tavern while it is present. You're just going to have to remember that that is the case. While Nomi offers a permanent aura to the tavern, regardless of if you sell Nomi off the board or not. It's not the same mechanic. It is the same wording. It is going to behave differently. We will just have to live with it. Alright, but it is a strong card. Without the, the whole, like, what's the problem with the way the mechanic works? It is a strong card. Anything that you're consuming, getting an extra 2-2, two -two, if you're going to buy mid-game minions, especially because this is a 3-star, you're going to be replacing a lot of minions on the board. Buying things that are 2-2 two -two bigger, way better in the mid-game for value trading. This card is going to be a house if you get it early. Super duper strong. We shall see, though. This just depends on how this thing, damn thing works. Like, my initial assumption was, like, you buy a minion and it loses the 2-2 two -two buff. Because it's just the minion's aura in Bob's Tavern. But there's no way that's, that's the way it works with, like, you know how Nomi has the same wording that permanently makes minions bigger in the shop. Ah, I just... All right, moving on. First mate, Pip. Tavern three, tier three pirate. This is replacing the gold pirate member. You only need two copies of a minion to make it golden. So you just need two of these. This minion. This minion. I may not have said that correctly the first time. This minion, you only need two copies to make it golden. So, uh, yeah. It's a pair immediately on the board. It's a 5-4 as a 3-star, which is a reasonable enough stat line to buy. This thing is an auto-buy in the mid-game. Oh, wait. You're telling me I can have a 5-4 pirate that is capable of tripling as soon as I see a second copy of it? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That sounds awesome, actually. Yeah. A 5-4 stat line? Man, if this was a 3-3, three, three, it's debatable to buy. A 5-4? Hell yeah. I'm taking that any day of the week. Treasure Seeker release. 5-5 five, five, after 5 refreshes. Find the Golden Monkey. The Golden Monkey is a 6-6 six, six taunt that when you play it, it's basically a gold card. It's just a golden minion, so you discover a minion of the Tavern tier above it. This thing's super cheap triple. You find a Tavern Seeker release, and this is a 6-star the next turn most of the time. Because you basically can just level and roll to get the golden monkey. I guess it, it's in the shop, I should say. Find the golden monkey in the shop, right? Yeah, yeah I think I believe they confirmed it's in the shop. So you're going to have to buy that. So but it's probably two turns to take a triple off of it. Still a very, very, very consistent. I get to buy a minion to guarantee a triple off of another minion in the future. You're buying two things for six gold. And you're selling them both back for two gold. So net four gold costs to take a triple. Discover a minion of a tavern tier above you for four gold if you assume that the refreshes are necessary for your game. Like if you're just rolling five times and immediately taking it, it's a lot more expensive. But if you're going to be rolling in the mid game naturally, you're basically saying four gold for a discover a minion of a tavern tier above you. And that is incredibly good. So it just depends on your kind of composition. If you're going to roll a bunch, it's going to be very strong. If you're not going to roll a bunch, then it's a little bit more costly. Rindle the Mastermind, four or five. At the end of your turn, steal the highest tier minion from Bob's Tavern. I, re I compared this thing to Witch Wing before and said early in the game, this is better than Witch Wing. Later in the game, it's worse than Witch Wing. Shockingly, they just removed Witch Wing. Turns out that we're just going to have a different mechanic that generates gold and or units similar to Witch Wing, but you don't have to play into Death Hurdle Synergy. So like this thing in the middle of the game as a 4-5, oftentimes you just take it because it's really cheap gold and you just get to leverage the extra economy to level more aggressively. Tortolan Blue Shell, 4-7, 5 star. If you lost the last combat, this minion sells for 5 gold. Okay, well if you're on Tavern 5 and you lost last combat, you can just buy and sell this thing from the shop, right? Hooray, you get to buy and sell this thing in the shop for net positive 2 gold. Alright, cool, well it's always there. Being on Tavern 5 just got better. Anytime you lose a round, you have an, a, minion, a minion that can appear in your shop to give you plus 2 gold. As long as you have an open board space. Hmm, pretty cool. Buying the minion in the middle of the game seems okay. A 4-7 stat line in times is, is useful. Especially if you triple into a 5 and you miss. Like, this thing is a reasonable take. 4-7 stats, and it potentially allows you to level up if you lose the next turn and just sell it and play for a different 5-star. Pretty cool. Game-changing? No. 
APM strats better? Yes. Better for APM Ellie and APM Pirates? Uh-huh. Useful in certain five-star taverns? Yep. Does it give you a direction? No. There you go. Here's my analysis on it. And finally, T Master Theatar. Tavern tier 6. 6-6. Six, six. Good flavor. It's a 6-star six 6-6. Six, six. After you play a minion with no type, give three friendly minions of different types plus 2-2. Two, two. In other words, it's kind of like a pseudo Light Fang. Kind of like Bran and Light Fang switched together. You're going to like Bran plus T Master Theatar. Will make a lot of sense as a synergy in the game. Buffing three minions 2-2 two, two is very good because you don't have to play wide menagerie. One of the big weaknesses of cards like Light Fang is that to get good value out of the card, you have to play bad minions. Things like... Uh, Things like um, Hydra and Divine Shields make a lot of sense to be on a Light Fang board. Things like a Rock Pool Hunter because you need a Murloc doesn't make a ton of sense. And if you combine cards like this with like Dark Gaze or Bran or whatever, you can play into two things. You can play like two mi miscellaneous minions, the or T Master, Bran, and then a Synergy on the last three units or the two units in a cycle spot or whatever you view it as. Maybe you don't play Bran. Maybe you play Dark Gaze plus two Divine Shields or Divine Shield and Cleave plus Agam plus something. Like this card is better than the extra tribe existing on the board. And now you can buy cards that are things like Reef Explorer or cards like Jug or cards like Selfless Hero or whatever neutrals you want and just sell it through and take a 6-6. Six, six. Is it an amazing card? Is it like, oh my god, this is what I want to do to win the lobby? Not necessarily. But if you're tripling into a six star in any given game, and this is a neutral, remember, this is probably the third or third to fifth the best hit in any given game. It increases the consistency of tripling in the sixes. Do you want this or do you want Zap? Do you want this or do you want Felbat? You know, maybe Felbat's better in certain scenarios and this thing's better in certain scenarios. Do you want this or Manted? Well, it depends on how much health you have in the middle of the game. Those kind of choices are really, really important. Do you want this thing versus Orgazoa when you're at 37 health? Obviously Orgazoa. Do you want this thing or a th or a Eliza when you're at 15 health? Obviously Eliza. But in a lot of scenarios, this is going to be a reasonable tick. Kind of a balanced card. Interesting to see. All right, that's it. You guys got my rant at the beginning. The 15 minutes of both for ranting about the monetization system and uh, about 30 minutes of patch review. It's a long video. I will be live on Twitch. Pretty much by the time this thing goes, this video goes live. So I will see you guys there if you are Twitch people. If not, feel free to leave any comments that you have about the patch. Complaints, whatever it might be, leave it below. Like, I, I get it. The patch has me disgusted as well. This is more of a patch review for the content rather than the, the monetization system. I am terribly disappointed with the monetization system. But everybody voices their opinions, or should be voicing their opinions. My opinion means no more than anybody else's in these kind of scenarios. So we like to hear from each and every one of you. All right, guys. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the other side. Peace.